I personally am working in the field of dyslexia because I am dyslexic and I wanted to improve the technology that's out there. So I'm tapping into the augmented and virtual realities of this world. And if, I don't know if you know about augmented reality or virtual realities, but augmented reality in definition is where a computer completely augments the reality. Ha ha ha. Obviously. So imagine being on your phone, for a dyslexic person, imagine being on your phone looking at a piece of paper and you have visual stress. It will transform the, the piece of paper into an easy read version just for you. Obviously I use this myself, it's not out there yet, but this is what I use myself. Things like Google Glass, for example, uses augmented realities. Dyslexic people are 3D thinkers, which is why fonts are very hard to read, because it's 2D. If we were to use a, uh, an app or something like this to have the word transform into 3D, it can even dance around, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's 3D, we can read it. That's the sort of technology, technology that we're, we're, we're developing and researching and trying to tap into. An example could be also used in restaurants, because in, in restaurants you can have a menu that I can't read and I have to get someone else to read it. I'm not five years old, I need to have something that I can do it myself so more independently. So that's the sort of technology that we can use before. Virtual realities, in definition, is where you can wear a headset and your world, can, your world will be changed into whatever the headset is projecting. And we're trying to develop this with educational establishments like Strathclyde University themselves, where we could teach people what it feels like to be dyslexic or autistic or any sort of anything to do with assistive technology. Because we want to provide more ways of learning. So if you was a teacher or you're a lecturer and you've got a dyslexic person in your room, you can have all the training in the world and still not understand it very well. Whereas we give you this headset, you can feel what it's like. It teaches you much, much more. Experience teaches a thousand books combined. That's why I believe in. It doesn't mean that if you're studying psychology or criminology and you're learning a certain particular part of psychosis, you put this on and you're going to have a psychotic episode and go around and kill people. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you can experience the, the sensations that we're developing. The, the whole concept of the, the software that I developed and that we are developing was to incorporate an ultimate tool for dyslexic so you don't just have one little thing for one thing and another software that deals with another thing. It's supposed to be a cross-platform desktop and you can use it anywhere in the world and it's the ultimate tool that everybody uses. Unfortunately, you can't cater for every single person in the world, but you can cover them for the majority. And it is doable, a lot doable. The technology out there is phenomenal, some of the stuff that we've come up with. Now, I always think the biggest problem that we come into is discretion. Dyslexic people don't want everybody to be like, I'm dyslexic, call me stupid, because that's what this stigma suggests. And this is where Mark Shackleton comes involved and to ex expand on it more. The word dyslexia actually comes from ancient Greece. Dys means absence and lexia means language. So at, dyslexia literally means absence of language. The term was first used in the 19th century to describe the problem of mixing up words while reading. And it was initially considered a medical problem. It became an educational issue in the 20th century. In 1983, Howard Gardner introduced his theory of multiple intelligences. The theory recognizes eight types of intelligence. Linguistic intelligence, to do with words and language. Logical mathematical intelligence, to do with numbers and figures. Those are the two which are the most common in academic education. Bodily kinesthetic intelligence, to do with the physical body and uh, hand-eye coordination. Musical intelligence, to do with uh, being able to hear musical uh, patterns and tone and rhythm in the mind. Spatial intelligence, also known as visual thinking. This is a right brain function and is commonly known, is commonly associated with dyslexic people. It's to do with learning uh, by image and colour. So uh, I could read a book and not tell you, can't remember anything about it, but if I watch a movie, 
I can tell you all about it based on what I heard, what I saw, things like that. If a hiker reads a map or a compass, they can give you a visual path of where they're going um, by using their imagination. Naturalistic intelligence to do with the interest in the natural environment. Interpersonal intelligence, how we relate to other people. So that would be a counsellor, a social worker, a politician, a teacher. Intrapersonal intelligence is reflection, how we base, how we uh, relate to ourselves. According to the theory, a person can have two or three variations. It's not, they're not isolated. The theory challenged the idea that somebody is either intelligent or not intelligent. This is more about whether your intelligence is considered useful, relevant to society, or whether it's considered useless, irrelevant, or even dangerous. We need a new education system, one that recognises all forms of intelligence. This has changed over the last 20 years, but it needs more work, needs more attention. Because an education system that teaches children that they're useless and stupid because they can't do a few things also teaches them to devalue and neglect their natural abilities. And in regards to labels, labels are like signposts on a street that would otherwise just be a normal street. But the signpost can't tell us anything about how many houses are on the street or who lives in them. We have to treat labels the same way. So we drop the la at some point we have to drop the label from our minds if we were to understand the truth about the subject. And we need a better label, because dyslexia means absence of language, which for what we understand today is too limited, it's irrelevant, and it's also useless. It needs to be changed to something more positive and realistic. I don't know what, but how about something that says learning difference rather than a learning difficulty? Thank you very much.